Yes, Hickok 45, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from the beautiful green hills of Tennessee, the home of Davy Crockett and Alvin York. How's that for some luminaries? Yes, and how's this for quite a firearm to be uh, shooting? Yeah, and to be fondling. Let me get the empties out. I wanted to show you the grip again. Hey, bait and switch. Uh, from the thumbnail, it looked like a little python or something. What was that? Well, we'll look at it. But I also have the Davy Colt out, my Davy Colt. Yes, the seven and a half inch cavalry model. The consecutively serial number Davy Colts. Got him. This is one. And John's has a four and three quarters inch barrel. Davy's has the five and a half inch barrel. His is unfired still. All right, so look up the video on that. Uh, I've explained that many times, and I probably will again, maybe today, a little bit, <laughs> what the Davy Colts are. So glad to have you out here. It's uh, a pretty nice day, you know. Uh, here we are. You know, we're we're moving along through September, and uh, it's it's a little cloudy this afternoon, and very uh, comfortable probably 72 degrees or something you know it's southern california temperature and weather uh which is unusual well it's not an, not unheard of it's just in in summer even september we often have really humid weather in tennessee quite a lot of it but uh, then we still then we begin to get into towards the uh, latter part of september it can still be really warm but often not as humid, you know, some better weather, some, some ideal type of weather. Really. And, and today is kind of like that, really. So I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be anywhere. I'm sure you are too. And to be above ground, uh, you can't beat it. Uh, don't forget this Saturday, the 23rd of September, I'll be at Greenville at Uncle Lee's, uh, one of Bud's locations at 11 o'clock in the morning. That's this Saturday, so I expect all of you to be there just like you've shown up for the last couple we've done, you know, in Sevierville and Lexington. I expect you to show up in Greenville at Uncle Lee's. I will see you there. It's the last concert on the tour. <laughs> yeah, so see, uh, see you there. And uh, yeah, I've got an interesting firearm. It, I just picked it up literally an hour ago or so just in time to for the Sunday video really and uh, like I said I mean these are all they're not never done Sunday duh to tell you that uh, but uh, they're done the week of the uh, of the week of Week of the 17th, okay? Whatever the date happens to be. It could be a Wednesday, it could be Friday, it could be Saturday, it could be Tuesday. Depending on weather and then also another kind of weather. Whether I'm going to be around on Friday and Saturday or whether I'm going to be around Thursday. You know, and whether the weather is going to be suitable on those, all that kind of thing. But up to now, I wow, out of 194 uh, Sunday uh, shoot-arounds, I have not had a day that week that was not doable. Might have been pretty cold on some of those days, right? Through what, what two winters worth or more. And uh, yeah, more than two winters. But uh, you know, there's usually a day that is suitable, even if it's like rainy and, uh, and everything. And of course I can't wait and do it, you know, Saturday afternoon as well or whatever. I try to avoid that because for those who don't know, um, a long video especially as these are long boring videos it takes a while to upload to your computer and then a long time to render it and then to upload to youtube and all those sorts of things you want to make sure so anyway um here I, uh here i am wow standing out in the woods expecting you all to be here and to listen well i do appreciate it i, I really do and uh it, it's cool and uh I've got a lot of, I, I got to quit making notes, mental notes or on paper or whatever. It's funny during the week, uh, something will come up and I, uh, I might mention that in Sunday video, or there's a good thing to talk about a little bit or whatever. Well, then I end up with 15 things. That'd be cool to talk about. Or I'd like to talk about that. <laughs> and it's just a Sunday video, a shoot around and, uh, 
it, the thought occurred to me, uh, maybe I should, uh, I don't know, maybe I should do the Sunday shoot around. Well, it's a Sunday morning shoot around, right? I'm gonna call it. Uh, maybe I should do that and, and, and really do just talk about the guns and, and a little shooting uh, and just enjoy a couple of firearms. And, and then Sunday evening or afternoon or some other time, just pull up a chair and talk to you, like I used to do with the uh, shooting the breeze or the radio show, and and actually make a couple of videos out of it. In one where I'm not not shooting or so. I don't know. I just thought if you got any ideas on that, I thought the Sunday afternoon uh, gab around or yak around or something. I don't know. Just a thought. But anyway, uh, we'll proceed today. Now, what I have out here, what well, what a shot was a 45 Colt. Davy Colt, right? And, uh, you know, mine. And, gosh, it's hard to believe it goes back to 2016, doesn't it? Time flies. Time flies when you're having fun. It seemed like I was just ordering those and, and then getting them in. In fact, I ran across some pictures I saved. We took a lot of pictures when they finally came in. And again, three consecutively serial numbered Colt Singer actions, 2016. And for, for me, uh, John, my son, and then for my grandson, Davey. And so, uh, yeah, I thought it'd be a cool thing to do. I ordered him before he was born. And uh, so I, I knew it'd be special, at least to us and hopefully to him. And so I took pictures and things, uh, uh, picking them up when they came in to, uh, it was, uh, at the time it was Elks Outdoors. You know, they checked in all my guns at the time here uh, and, and uh, here in Tennessee and uh, I ran across those pictures recently and opened up so I was going through some of them and there they were in the boxes unfired and I, uh, John took my picture doing the paperwork you know the 4473 and everything so it was kind of neat it's good to have all that you know so and of course we have the videos with them and uh, so that's one thing I've had. and the, uh, it is the 150th anniversary right all year uh, for the Colt single action army, uh, 45, in fact, it's in this configuration, you know, that it came out in seven and a half inch barrel, cavalry model, everything. Uh, so, uh, like I told you, I might get one out every week. <laughs> I haven't done that, but, um, you know, I, I tell you what, maybe every other week, I, before, uh, eight, before, 19, before 2023, I got my head back in 1873, <laughs> but uh, before 2023 is over and the celebration is over, although I will continue to celebrate it, uh, maybe I should bring one out like every other week, at least in addition to whatever else I have. I might just try to think about doing that, bring a different one out every, every week or every other week or something, okay? Uh, just such a special historical firearm they are uh, historical design this particular piece is not historical except in that it is <laughs> almost the same as the way they built them in 1873 right but uh, yeah cool I got some that are more historical I think it is trying to rain on me maybe I'll have to talk fast uh, or your, your lucky day maybe right I get rained out and then, what did I pick up? Uh, this is a firearm that most of you probably have. Uh, you, you know, they're in all the gun shops and they're only a couple hundred bucks. It's the new Colt King Cobra 22 long rifle. I, I guess I would say long rifle. It's not necessarily long rifle. It's chambered in whatever 22 you want to put in it, right? Uh, if you have some shorts or longs. So that was a joke. Yeah, that was a joke. Uh, as I'm recording this, these things are kind of hard to come by, aren't they? Uh, you don't see these things in gun shops. That's a joke. And they're not $200. I forget what they are. Yeah, is any gun $200? Maybe a high point? So, yeah, the King Cobra in 22. i I've been seeing these things at, at the NRA meeting or shot showing around and uh, uh, making a note mentally to, uh, to try to get a hold of one. Finally got one, you know, from Bud's. Uh, but boy, they don't last long. So I'm sorry to bring one out and tease you with it. Oh yeah, that's a cool gun, Hickok. I'm gonna go to my local gun shop and get one or order one online. Yeah, well maybe you'll get one. Uh, like all Colts, eh, 
other companies too are bad about that. Just like Microsoft used to be back in the early days of software, we used to call it vaporware. You know, they'd announce and publicize a, a Windows was the best, the biggest one. They were coming out with Windows, you know, graphic uh, program. Back, that one was at 80s. And, uh, you know, and then it was delayed, and it was delayed more, and, you know, and all that kind of, they were competing with Apple, you know, and uh, their graphics. And finally, Windows came out. Many of you don't remember those days, right? But I did, I lived it. I was in the computer world then, uh, so I was uh, very much a part of that, at uh, SoftCon. Some of you might relate to it. I went to SoftCon, big national convention for software and computers. Uh, went a couple of different years, New Orleans in the Superdome. And where else was it? San Francisco? Was that part of that trip? No, it was something else. Yeah, it might have been. I don't know. But anyway, that, those were the days. It was exciting. It really was. I, you know, I just left teaching and, uh, you know, 79, 80, and 81, I got into publishing, medical publishing, and we started up this software part of it. And uh, which was new, microcomputers were just showing up and everything. So it was really exciting times uh, in that world, although it was frustrating because there were a lot of problems with computers. But uh, you know, the IBM PC and, and the Apple II, and the Apples didn't cause a lot of problems, but uh, a lot of what we did was PC based too. Anyway, uh, some of you can relate to that, <laughs> others can't. Maybe I'll tell more stories about that at some point. Yeah, I taught school for 29 years, but I, I got in some other things that, wow, uh, just this well, weird careers just kind of hit at the right time or the wrong time and got into areas like that where it was just booming or it was going crazy at the time and got into a couple of jobs that were just, wow, almost more than I could handle because of things, uh, technology changes and everything else. So, uh, but by and large, uh, here I am, King Cobra, 22. Uh, been wanting to get a hold of it for a while. I haven't fired it yet. I brought a screwdriver so I can mess up the sights. You love it. What would you do if I didn't have a firearm that I was trying to figure out where to hold the sights on? That's just sort of a regular, that's a routine, isn't it? Especially on Sundays, it seems like. But I thought I would just not fire it until, until you all showed up. How's that? And I also want to pre uh, thank Alabama Holster uh, for their support of the channel. Go, go to alabamaholster.com. They, uh, they have uh, really cool holsters. Uh, they, again, I've been using them for a long time, so I really do. It's not a, it's not one of those deals where we had a, a, a company contact us that, you know, makes good stuff and they're going to support the channel. So, you know, we're happy about that, as, as any of you and, and, and we would be. Well, this goes beyond that. So like balance saw and talon grips that you've been using them forever and in Alabama holster. And you've been seeing them here. I've been using them for a long time and uh, I just really like them, you know. So, appreciate their, their support. And uh, who else helps us? Well, of course, gun, uh, gun fund targets make their paper targets for us and then balance stall, talon grips. Uh, so we're lucky. Uh, so, what should I shoot? I'm, let's go ahead and shoot this for the first time, maybe in its life. Has it been test fired? Yes, it probably has, right? Gun companies need to do some test firing, don't they? It's just amazing, the firearms. I don't know, I'll throw some CCI in first. Now let's put some Winchester in first, won't you? Yeah. This is the ammo I growed up with, uh, Winchester Super X. 22 long rifle. I mean, I bought so much of that in the, back in the day and uh, in my early adult days, I used to go to, uh, we found, I used to shoot a lot of 22. Uh, service merchandise, if you remember them, they always had bricks of, of Winchester Super X, you know, the, the coated, you know, good stuff. This is just basically that round, as far as I recall. They had bricks of that. I remember it was ten dollars. I think was the lowest, maybe nine ninety nine or something. I remember them at that price. Some of you might remember them even lower. Uh, and it, 
they might have been up to like almost twenty dollars before service merchandise went out of business. I, I don't recall. It seemed like I remember that being a price for a while. But anyway, that's a brick. What five hundred rounds? And uh, we can like get a brick of that for ten bucks now. Of course, that was old money value. You know, that was uh, you know a long time ago in the whatever late 60s early 70s and so you know that's uh, you always got to remember that when people start talking about oh, I remember you used to buy a soft drink for a quarter or a gallon of gas for a quarter that kind of thing which is true I remember all those days too but I also remember when a gallon of gas when it was a quarter what my salary was you know <laughs> I say you always want to uh, be honest with yourself right let's put this ammo in here uh, okay, I'm going to load up some Winchester. So I don't know. Oh, it's interesting. These uh, chambers are not uh, recessed, which is fine, I reckon. Uh, got all kinds of news I could talk about. Went to, uh, had a, uh, you may have seen my post. Where did I put that? It was on, uh, I was going to put it on Facebook. I put a posting on Instagram, The Real Hickok 45. And uh, a couple of pictures of speaker, but John Rich, uh, Ron uh, Jr., and uh, uh, Eric Pratt, and uh, Mark Green, Congressman. All great speakers and great. It was almost a. I mean, to somebody, it was a almost an excess of riches, you know, because a lot of great speeches, a lot of great speeches, and. Uh, the auction and all that raised a lot. I think they set a record for money raised uh, at, at the event uh, uh, last Saturday. It was a great event. The John Harris and the crew, the Tennessee Firearms Association do a wonderful job with that. A lot of work. Uh, you know, I, I don't do much labor at all. I, I try to help uh, donate some money and then uh, a gun or two every year and uh, for the auction, you know, but man, People put in a lot of work uh, with the Tennessee Firearms Association, and uh, if you're in Tennessee, man, join, join, and uh, help out however you can. The uh, state organizations are really, uh, a lot of ways, leading the, the charge. So whatever state you live in, I hope you are supporting the gun rights organizations within your state, unless you happen to live in some state where the organization's really lame or something, I don't know, or you don't have one. So, all right. 22, King Cobra. Let's see how, let's first test this accuracy on this paper. Let's shoot it, uh, well, well, we'll go for the bullseye. Oh man, look at that. Wow, almost a double, same hole. That is accurate. Yeah, I'm loving that. Let's try a two liter. That really tests the accuracy. <laughs> Let's try on this plate right here. I'll hold right in the middle of it. You might not be able to see it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the windage seems probably okay. Uh, Printed just a hair high at that spot, which is a good thing. How many rounds do we have? Uh, I'll throw one at the gong. Got him. Let's go double action. <laughs> uh, if it does print just a, a tad high, which it would just be a little bit, it looks like, that's a good thing because that means, yeah, I can uh, lower that rear sight. I noticed it's up a little bit. I always prefer the rear sight, if I can, to be down. I mentioned that on my Python, or my uh, Anaconda, like it down. Now that sight seems nice and sturdy. I don't notice any play like we, uh, like the Python and the, the 2020 Python and 2021 Anaconda kind of showed, and that's one reason. Wilson Combat sells a lot of replacement sites, I guess. 
Okay. Let's try the little CCI or this thing. Well, what I was saying, the uh, the cylinder, if you, how well you can see that, but uh, it was a little odd. It's uh, kind of flat. You know, it's a little different. Let's see how many rounds of old two, four, six, eight. Yeah, you know, ten. That's what I thought. Ten rounds. Okay. Gotta love a ten round uh, revolver. Uh, a 22. I know the action. I think it it maybe creates a, a challenge or two with the the bolt and the hand and all of that. It's not just a matter of drilling more holes in the cylinder, right? Although that's part of it. You do need to drill more holes in the cylinder if you want to get more bullets in it. Yep, I figured that one out. But it goes beyond that, doesn't it? Uh, I've always, uh, you know, for as long as I've been into firearms almost, I, I think I got spoiled by my dad's re revelation. You know, it's made by high standard, but Western Auto Revelation, you've seen it out here, what is it, Model 99 or something, uh, that I've been firing since I was 10. And uh, it, what is it, a nine shot? I think it's a nine shot. And that's an old gun. Design's been around a long time. Uh, I guess the design's probably been around as long as I have. I don't know when the first ones of those were made by high standard. Uh, I, I've known, I've looked it up at one point, I forget. Probably 1950 or something, or 45 or 55, I don't know. But So the capability of having a, a, a firearm that'll hold that many rounds, 22, has been around a long time. And I remember uh, you know, friends that had Smith & Wesson Model 17s, that's right, Model 17s, yeah. Uh, before the 617 even came out, which I have now one, but... And uh, the uh, the model, I don't know if any of the Model 17s ever uh, were were made that held more than six rounds. Uh, the 6.7, maybe the first, I think in fact, the, yeah, the first 617s I think were just six round guns too, six shooters because a friend of mine had one. And I, so that, that's been fairly recent. I think that they went to whatever it is, eight or 10 on it. Uh, recent years, at least. But I, I used to wonder, a friend of mine uh, back in 1985, I know, had a, a, a Model 17 and would come out and we'd shoot it. And it just seemed like such a waste. This big old Smith & Wesson and that one was like a six inch barrel and it just held six bullets. You know, I'd get out my revelation and it held nine or something and and uh, it's just like, why is it just a six shooter? You know? So anyway, uh, this new crop of revolvers you see, uh, the, uh, most of the newer, you know, Ruger, Smith and this, it's, it's cool to hold eight. Yeah, eight's good too, you know, uh, ten's better of course, but it's just nice. So that's my rant on it, on capacity. I want high capacity, cowboy. How about you? Yeah. Let's try this again on, uh, let's see. I'm going to put a uh, hit on, well, I'm going to shoot at that hit on the disc right there. Okay. All right, looks like they're going right on. Yeah, right on top of the hit that was there. Whereas here, well, let's try that one. I'm gonna shoot to the left of those hits. Now I'm gonna aim at that hit. That was a bad trigger let off. Let me try it again. Yeah, that's better. Okay, hit on the same hit. Uh, yeah, when you've been shooting a while, you, you know, years and years, decades and decades, yeah, the thing I was doing right there, and I think I was doing this, what, last week, week before, you know, putting some hits and then, you know, determine where it hits and hold on that hit and see if it hits above it or below it and all that kind of thing. Well, now, sometimes, you know, like, like there, the first one I tried, the second one, whatever, uh, that I could tell. I pulled it, you know, so it went below that hit. So that didn't tell me anything, but, but I knew it. The experience kind of teaches you uh, that was not a good let off, you know. But then the second one was, it just felt good, I more focused, uh, concentrated better, and it hit right on the same hit, just like those did there, more or less. So, so I've got it to where it's not hitting, it's not printing high, I don't think. I mean, it still could be. That's still kind of a, 
a redneck <laughs> side end, right? Let's try the gong out there. All right. Yeah. I uh, I was holding on the bottom before because I knew it was printing a little bit high. So anyway, anyway, it's not far off. Put it that way. Okay. Uh, pretty cool. Hey, it works. <laughs> yeah, the most obvious thing, the most important thing, it, it fired. Uh, you know, one of these days I'll bring something out here for the first shots and it won't work. Nice looking gun. Uh, looks a little bit like a python, doesn't it? Well, I love the rib barrels. I always have. So, yeah, not bad. Not bad. What do you want to know about? Anything? Uh, oh yeah, all kinds of politics and stuff going on, like in New Mexico, how bizarre is that? I love the, uh, I love the comments from the governor of New Mexico. She said, uh, we're, see, we're, we're create, we want to create a cooling off period. That was the phrase she used, while well, we figure out what to do, you know, by outlawing open and concealed carry, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, create a cooling off period. <laughs> You have a crime problem, uh, and we we can deal with this. We just need a cooling off period, so let's let's make it illegal to uh, to carry a firearm, <laughs> and the criminals will all leave their guns at home, and they will cool off, and uh, you know they'll be good for their temper, and there'll be fewer murders and less crime. Woo! Who elects these people? That's my question. You know, you can look at, I, mean, I bring this up all the time to friends and different folks, you know, the, uh, you can criticize any politician you want, you know, and boy, some of them are so dumb these days, aren't they? They are, I always refer to loony, you know, when I, there's a loony right and a loony left. And uh, it, they used to be kind of equal, you know, it, it was either the loony right, far right, loony far right. And I was way off the edge, almost out to the right, and off the edge, almost to the left. That's how I kind of define it. Both of those edges, those loony extremes, were trying to basically control us in some way, right? And that's just kind of the way it's always been. They want to. They both of them have a totalitarian uh, nature. They want to control what you do in your own house or whatever it is. You know, sometimes from the right, they used to be really bad about that. Not as bad as it used to be there on that end of the scale. And it's it's mostly the loony left, that far edge, uh, where I guess she would be. But uh, but anyway, it's there's always going to be people who will take advantage of their power. Uh, the sad thing is there are so many thousands, tens of thousands, millions of people, voters, who are not bothered by that and elect these people and then re-elect them. You know, and name whatever politician uh, you, you want to that just, just is unbelievably stupid, okay, Cl clueless, or whatever uh, adjective you want to use. And I mean, we direct a lot of uh, dislike and disgust at that politician, but how they get there, how they get reelected, it's our neighbors, you know, it's our neighbors, it's it's half of our neighbors just, just, it is, that think way differently than we do. That That's the, the thing we have to keep in mind is like half the people almost that you run into and that live in your neighborhood probably or wherever you see in, on the road, other cars, half of them don't agree with you or me. Yeah, I, I probably don't agree with everything you think and you don't agree with everything I think, you know, I mean, it's just the way it is. But, but half of the people are diametrically opposed on them, probably almost everything that I think or you think, you know? And uh, that's it, and they, they vote, enough of them vote. But that's where, how we get this stuff. So that's why one reason, you know, decades and decades and decades, you know, we, one of the emphasis has been uh, in, in fighting against gun control, the movement is, is uh, the need to win the hearts and minds of people, of your neighbors. 
you know, uh, which is, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, people get criticized for, oh, I don't know, uh, trying to uh, not appease your neighbors, but to try to reason with them and or do things that uh, that don't make sense uh, in order to not aggravate the situation. An example, like when there's a Second Amendment rally, often you know we'll be uh, advised by whoever's handling the rally or whatever they're doing uh, to. Uh, you know, try to dress, you know, responsibly, uh, maybe don't come camouflaged up, that kind of thing. Uh, maybe don't be waving a Confederate flag. You know, I caught flag for, flack for that one time because I, I mentioned somewhere on a post or Facebook or somewhere uh, about how it was at a rally, you know, people had uh, Confederate flags and things. That I, and, you know, I'm a Civil War buff and I understand all that. I, but it's, uh, uh, and that's open to criticism, I understand. But the reason that some of us, you know, kind of encourage our Second Amendment friends to try to avoid some of that as coming off as a Neanderthal is, is that that's what the media is looking for and that's what they're portraying to the rest of the public, those voters I'm talking about, and, and many of them, some of them are still on the fence about it, you know. And, you know, trying not to push them on over. Because, I mean, really winning the hearts and minds of our neighbors is very, very important. You know, I mean, it's easy and I same temptation. <laughs> eh, screw them. You know, they're, they're that dumb or, you know, they don't believe in freedom. Or what's the matter? You don't believe in the Second Amendment? Well, then, you know, heck with you. You know, I do what I want. Yeah, I, you know, I, can, I could argue both uh, approaches. <laughs> I really could. Because I get frustrated with it as well. But anyway, that it is a big deal, you know, trying to win the hearts and minds of people and using common sense and keeping our cool. And I don't know how I got off on all that. <laughs> I think I'm going to shoot something else. How about this? I started to say 150-year-old firearm. Well, the design is, the design is, right? So let's fire some, uh, what do I got? Yeah, let's fire some of this. Uh, yeah, Fiocchi. All right. Uh 250 grain slug. Yeah, man. It's 250 grains of pure heavenly lead. Yes. Mined from the ground and then returned to the ground by shooters, right? Returned to nature, recycled, re and then used and returned to the earth. All right. Now this one does print a little high. Uh, I brought the screwdriver out again, of course, to adjust the sights on it too, right? Wasn't that funny? All right, what do we want to shoot? How about this? Oh, nice. Yeah, sweet. How about a pig? Yeah, swings that hog. <laughs> I think I have another round. Do I? I didn't count. No, I don't. That was five. All right. Do you notice any opening? I just went down there and blasted that guy point blank. Sometimes it's fun to do that. Uh, so many of the targets I shoot, I can't do that. <laughs> well, I could. I could walk right up on a steel target and shoot it. You know, <laughs> all I want would not be smart though, would it? I uh, want Avenger paper. You can just walk right up on it, shoot it. Uh, two liter if you want to get a bath. Um, yeah, metal bucket can shoot that from anywhere. Uh, that, that was what was fun in USPSA competition. Uh, you, had, you had steel targets, but you also had a lot of paper. And there would be really fun scenarios like running through a hallway or running through and you come through with your, your pistol, you know, and come through here. And you know you got maybe three targets right here uh, in this room. You go into this room or down this hallway and you got to engage these three targets. And it's just paper. Uh, and most of the time there's a little distance involved, but occasionally there would not be distance. And so you just run there, boom, 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 boom. You're right up on them. And that was always fun. Uh, so.
Yeah, I, I guess it's shooting is fun, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh uh, yeah, the other issue, the Liberty Safe issue. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The uh, the worst part about that uh, is I heard other people talking and all the information over the over the week or so was uh, I was surprised to learn some of the politicians that Liberty Safe has supported. Wow, some real anti-gunners. You know, that's kind of I understand a lot of uh, businesses or. Uh, celebrities or individuals, you know, whatever it might be, if you have a company, you you, uh, you might throw some money at both parties, or all three parties, you don't know who's going to be in the race, you just want to have, a, I guess, open lines of communication, some influence with every party and all that kind of thing. Some of that is just business, I guess. But, uh, wow, some of the people they were supporting, uh, regardless of the, it, it, although they're, they're trying to overcome apparently what what their policy was, you know, and so I guess that's to be, to be commended for that, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, to learn more about that, it's a, you know, you would think, well, it's, 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 it's an indication, though, whatever, whatever, uh, all the nuts and bolts of it are, and however it uh, plays out, it's an definitely an indication that they didn't seem to know their customer base, you know? Didn't seem to be in touch with their customer base. So that's always surprising. All right, like what else could be more important than that? Okay, let's just pop a two liter or two here. About that. Yeah, wow, dramatic. I'm going to shoot through that red one, see if I can hit the cowboy. Oh, did you hear that? It actually did go through that two liter and hit the cowboy. There was a, there was a little bit of uh, velocity left in it. <laughs> yeah, after I said that, I was a little surprised that it... Uh, that it did. Oh, well, that's why I do these scientific experiments like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I better give some advice before I uh, go too long. Again, like I did last year. Uh, young people, do I have some advice? What was I going to mention? Uh, uh, yeah, just a little phil philosophical advice about ignorance versus knowledge or enlightenment and all that kind of thing you know you want to become as educated as you can and don't don't leave it up to your teachers kiddies all right <laughs> don't leave it up to them at all read 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 a variety of things and we're all on uh, our phones and uh, laptops tablets or whatever watching videos all the time try to get away from the entertainment stuff all the time and, uh, and bounce around. There's so much to be learned. We got the whole world at our fingertips, you know. And uh, gosh, what's that meme? I I saw. I shared with a couple of my buddies something about. Uh, said we got the entire universe of knowledge at our fingertips, but yet we spend 80 or 90 percent of our time arguing with people on Twitter that we don't even know or something. You know, just just. You know, we got all this knowledge, uh, and, uh, and some of it's actual knowledge and some of it's not. But, yeah, you know, that's part of the education process, too. The learning process is, is sensing what's real and what's not and what's useful and what's not. And one thing that helps a great deal is by just exploring and, and deep dives into whatever the area is, and watching a lot of different people, a lot of different videos on that topic, reading a lot on that topic, and you begin to see common denominators that make sense, and you actually realize, okay, a lot of smart people seem to think this is probably uh, correct or the way it should be done, that sort of thing. But you, but you do have to watch it because we all have our own universe, and it's based on, you know, the algorithms know what we like, right? And uh, they know our politics, our preferences, and everything, just based on what we're looking at. And so, uh, 
yeah, I mean, we have a million examples, right? So the things that are going to be offered to you are probably going to be things you like or agree with, you know. You always have to be aware of that. You know, we have this gigantic universe of, of videos coming at us or pictures or articles or whatever it might be. But most of them are going to fall under what we uh, have been looking at and what we like, you know. But, but still, there's a lot of great information. So you want to look at as much as, uh, as you can and become educated and, uh, you know, get beyond that, that, that little learning is a dangerous thing level to where you actually know a lot. And, you, and I tell you, when, one of the clues that you have kind of gotten a little bit beyond that, I think, is you begin to, to realize, oh yeah, that was, um, boy, I'm glad I didn't go ahead with that because I was of the opinion based on my studies and my reading or whatever that I should do this, you know, whether it was invest in this kind of thing or whatever it might have been. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I can see now, I'm kind of beyond that. I see that that was first level or that was, that was, uh, Eh, it's not the right thing for me. You just you just know that you, you're about to jump too soon, maybe. You so you got to realize that and get beyond that first, second, third level on, on any topic. But, uh, you know, it's fun to be, you know, have myths and things to believe in. And in some ways, once we see that man behind the curtain, it takes away some of the, I don't know, the romance of life, perhaps. The moon is not made of green cheese. Imagine that. Uh, you know, a couple of examples with me was when I got out to uh, 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 old Tucson, you know, and, uh, and toured the old studios where a lot of the westerns were made. Uh, you know, and that, that was really interesting. I've been there a couple of times. And so now when I watch westerns, some, not, they all weren't filmed there. But a lot of the John Wayne movies were, and, and other movies, The Gambler, uh, I noticed that was filmed there. The, of course, The High Chaparral, I, I can name lots of them were filmed there. But now when I see those movies uh, or those series, I, I, I know I stood there, and I know what's behind there. Like uh, if you remember The, old, the High Chaparral, and I, it was funny. What was I watching? Maybe it was The Gambler, a piece of it. Uh, this past week or a different movie I don't know but uh, and I, I wasn't sure oh, I said that looks like old Tucson yep it was like and in the background right there was the house with the cactus right at the front porch remember that so they walked out on the front porch there was a large uh, Swaru cactus right there and it's one of the defining features of, of that set and uh, and I saw that in the background and they were supposed to be out in the middle of nowhere, you know, and that was just a house where somebody lived or whatever. And they had ridden, you know, through the desert to get there. Well, I happened to know that right behind the camera was the whole town, you know. And in the same way, or in the town, different scenes that are shot or in the, the adobe buildings or whatever, I, you know, I, I just know what's there and around there. And it takes a little bit away from it, you know, there's a little train station there and everything, knowing they're just around that fake town, you know, doing that and filming that. And, uh, and the distances are the big thing too, because they'll, they've ridden forever and they show up in this town. Or, well, no, no, they're just there in old Tucson. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just in it. but anyway, so it's, it's, it's fake. You know, and the same thing when uh, I went out a couple of springs ago, has it been, or three? Spring of 2020? I, I don't know, when it, I did the follow-up interview with Tucker Carlson, that was, that was uh, where we sat outside. Uh, I guess that was just on Fox Nation. I don't think that was on his show. But anyway, uh, I might have posted a picture of that on, on uh, uh, Instagram or Facebook, I don't know. But anyway, so we went out there, they wanted us to come out and, and, uh, and do a follow-up interview with the, the segment we did here and everything. And we drove into the Fox Studios. There on the left was like this, this street in this town. You know, it's like, wow, the building's pretty high and it, it was the town, you know. And 
That's interesting. And of course, where we were filming and doing the just the interview was over here, kind of cross the road, and right across from that. And so I observed all that, and I recognized some of that I thought from commercials and things. And then I so now when I see a commercial, and so many of the drug commercials are filmed there, it's obvious, you know, and other commercials. They're dancing around and goofy stuff, you know. Uh, it's it's right there. And uh, I think in the past I'd always thought those commercials that well, okay, they've they gone into some little town, you know, like Franklin, or any number of towns, and they just, whatever, for five hours, they rent the town and get everybody off the streets, or they use them for extras or something. Eh, they're filmed to places like that. It's just in a studio outside, and it does look like, you know, regular buildings and businesses there, but it, it's not. Uh, so anyway, you know, you that's a little bit different, I guess, but. The man behind the curtain, you know, uh, it takes away some of the the beauty or the uh, the fantasy of it. Uh, you know, your imagination maybe it, it gets slapped in the face to some extent. Uh, the more you know, you know, knowledge. Uh, but in the long run, it's worth it to be a little bit smarter, a little more enlightened, and get beyond that that first level, you know, of whatever your perception is of things. You know, so I don't know if that made any sense. If I ever start making too much sense, somebody let me know. <laughs> let me know. Uh, can I shoot this? Let's do. All right. 45 Colt. The cartridge. Man, that everybody loves, right? But nobody wants to buy the expensive. If you're ever going to get into hand loading, as I've said before, uh, many times, 44 Special, 45 Colt, well, 44 Mag, you know, what for that matter. Those are great ones to hand load because they're so expensive to buy a box of ammo. Um, this, this, they've always been kind of pricey, but uh, even way more pricey now. But yet, to hand load, it's not that much different from anything else. I mean, you've got to buy the primers and the powder and the lead bullets and all that sort of thing. But just because 44 Special doesn't show up in the shops very much, and, that, and that's one thing, the availability makes it expensive, or the fact that not many people shoot it, and so that adds to the price, right? Uh, but if you hand load for it, all that's are kind of irrelevant. Yeah, as long as you got the components, all that's irrelevant, you know. How common it is, how many other people shoot it, it doesn't matter, really. It's been my experience through the years. Uh, lead bullets, whether they're 44 uh, bullets or 45, you know, for 45 ACP or whatever, uh, there's just not that much difference. It, you know, so, hand load, if you like doing it. If you don't like doing it, don't do it. I'm going to hit some bowling pins if I can. There's one behind that guy. Oh, Kapowie. Just decided I needed to shoot a plate as well. Oh man. Big old 45 slugs. Doesn't get much better than that. Yep. Is that uh, that beautiful stag or what? Sandbar stag. Eagle grips. Yep. Raj. He, he's fixed me up on those, boy. In 2015 or 16, uh, helped pick those out and sent them over to Colt. I mean, I bought them from him, but uh, he got them. Yeah, he sent them over to Colt and uh, they fit them like they do. Uh, uh, Colts are just different than like Ruger or, or some other brands where you can go buy replacement grips and all that kind of thing easily. They are fitted as they, uh, they, they, they finish off that uh, back strap and the, the grip uh, with the grips on. So it's all you know, done uh, together. And so that's, uh, that's why they, they have a beautiful fit. And it's why if, if I decided I want some wooden grips for this, I'd have some real serious fitting to do, okay?
some serious fitting or another set of uh, stag or a set of stag for some of my other colts. It, it's not just a matter of you know, getting some and putting them on there. Uh, you're gonna have some fitting to do and you really have a problem if they're too small. Do I need to explain that? Yeah, and I don't mean too thin, I mean too small. <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe it just doesn't protrude as much you know, uh, out here. And so you got metal from the frame. So you can take material off and you know get it flush, be really careful with it, but they're hard to stretch. Yeah, so no charge for that information. All right, anything else you wanted to know? Uh, oh, I had something I thought. This is this is the fun of being on the internet or uh, whatever I thought I would share. There's just all this today. A comment. Uh, it was on a short. You remember the short I posted about with the uh, LWRC, uh, the suppress and everything? And it took a few shots with it. Someone said, uh, hate to say it, Hickok, but some of the dings from hitting supposed targets are added post-production. I carefully watched the movement of the barrel, and unless those targets are moving, you missed a couple of shots of those shots. Life is good when you're truthful. So he caught me. I was cheating in the short. You know, I had, again, my mother-in-law, whom you've seen the video probably, of her over here behind the gong hitting it with a hammer. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I answered him. I, oh, I said, well, that's good to know. John and I will have to investigate and attempt to figure out what three-letter government agency is secretly drugging us to the point where we don't even notice we're missing the targets and then somehow grabbing our video files off my phone without my knowing it and then editing in gong sounds before I upload to YouTube. Thankfully, you were watching and, and, uh, and we're about to... Thankfully, you were watching and we're about to reveal this weird conspiracy. I don't know what I was thinking about that. Or it could even be aliens, you know. <laughs> or it could be that your phone or computer connection has a little delay, especially uh, since for 17 years and almost 3,000 videos, we've shown pretty clearly that we do not edit out misses. We don't care enough about misses and hits to trick viewers. Otherwise, we would not produce unedited videos. <laughs> sometimes shooters hit the target. Sometimes shooters miss the target. And that's just the way it is. So anyway, uh, just to reiterate, uh, yeah, there's another example of I hope someone will put me out of my misery if I'm ever faking stuff, uh, you know, in videos. Uh, well, I don't, when I shouldn't say that uh, too too strongly. There could be something that, that for some reason, uh, wouldn't be good to be shown. I can't think of anything, but, you know, whatever it might be. But I definitely not worried about, you know, something accidentally happens or something, you know, but... Uh, pants fall down, I don't know. but uh, yeah, yeah, that's obviously somebody had been around long, but uh, yeah, I don't understand. I, I people write me and, and they'll they'll compliment us, you know, it's been a common uh, compliment, I guess you'd say, over the years. Of, I'm glad you don't edit out your misses, you know, you know, et cetera, et cetera, over and over, you know, to say that. And, and that's another one of those things I can't imagine doing that because. You know, the purpose of what we do is not to to show you, oh, man, I'm Rob Latham. You know, I'm the ultimate shooter, which I'm not, you know. And, you know, we're just showing you guns and how fun they are. And then, uh, you know, that one of the things we did early on and we always like to do, I guess, is with small guns is show that you can hit a target far away with a handgun. Some of the earliest things we did was shooting uh, pistols at 230 yards just showing, because that's one of the myths out there that so many people are you know, buying into, that you can't hit anything with a three inch barrel, you know, or with a snubby, uh, or a handgun period, or whatever. So we did some of that early on at long range, because I had some experience doing that, and I thought it'd be fun to show. Yeah, maybe I'm showing off a little bit, I don't know, but you know, it's fun to bring the gong out there, maybe four or five times out of, a, out of six with a 44 at 2.30 or, uh, you know, even with a Glock, we did that with the Glock 27. I think I hit enough to make it worth doing, you know, so, uh, so, but you, we miss, you know, but it's not about that. We've done a little of that, but it's not about that, you know, shooting and so, I mean, boy, there's some videos where I am missing a lot, 
those of you been around a while, you know. Uh, I can think of some where the sights weren't on. I didn't do enough to get the, to figure out the sights before we started the video, or I was just just missing. And we'd go on with it, and uh, yeah. Anyway, so anyway, a, a new person, uh, but uh, yeah, that that uh, I, I think yeah, uh, people can call me whatever they want, you know, whatever they want. Uh, we we've caught it from all sorts of folks, of course. Uh, oftentimes just trying to get publicity or, or whatever it is. But uh, someone accuses us of faking something. Yeah, now that, I, I, don't, I don't like that. That, that, that. Well, I start to say it bothers, that does bother me. It, it does in a sense. It bothers me that, that people would think that, you know, just like you, know, you personally, if someone thought you were not honest, that would bother you way, if they really thought that, that would bother you more than a lot of other things would, than just thinking you're ugly or whatever it might be, right? Um, but uh, yeah, because I think the reason that it would bother me so much is we have always gone to such great lengths to to show the reality of whatever we're doing, even those 230 grain, uh, 230 <laughs> range, 230 yard, I'll get, you know, right in a minute, the 230 yard target videos we did, I was talking about from up in the driveway, slinging way over there and showing you could actually hit, you know, with, with that, hit a gong with a handgun. We would, uh, and, and yet we talk about that before we're doing it, because we, we don't ever want to come off as faking stuff. Uh, and uh, and those, those were unedited, you know, and, and I know John and I would talk about it, and I would remind him, okay, to start out on where I'm shooting, because some people aren't going to believe this. You know, they're going, you know, I know people. And uh, and I would miss, of course, but I'd hit, too. And I, I wanted to see I'm actually shooting and zoom out. Uh, once, we, once we see, I think on all those, once I have a hit, and you can hear the hit, you know, when I'm shooting, because John's behind me, and then you know, I'm shooting a couple or whatever. And then when I hit it, don't, go, don't zoom out on the target. Uh, I would tell him until I've hit it. So, you know, and then, you know, and then if I hit it again, they'll see it up close and you can zoom, come back on me or whatever. We just want to make it obvious with no edits that this isn't some kind of, you know, uh, fakery or whatever. For the people who have never shot anything that far away with a handgun, and especially, and don't realize that that's possible. In fact, it's not as hard as it looks really if you shoot very much yeah so but anyway so i think that's the the thing there uh you know not gonna fake anything i'm not gonna fake it can i shoot this <laughs> uh, but it is fun it is fun shooting at long range if you ever get a chance to do it uh i was telling somebody recently visiting they were doing some work around the house it, it's it's a bit of a uh Oh, the old willing suspension of disbelief thing. Like some of you that are uh, good with a handgun, you're better than I am. You can shoot a tighter group, you gotta stay your hand, and I guarantee you there's some of you out there, a lot of you. Uh, but yet you haven't shot like at long range. You haven't tried that, like shooting metal at even 80 yards, much less 230 or whatever, whatever size target. You've never done it before. If you're standing over there in my driveway where you can see the 230 yard you know, uh, gong, you might think as good as you are, that, oh man, I couldn't hit that with a handgun. And really it's just a, it's just so far away. Uh, but, but it's big, pretty good size. And it's just the idea of it being so far away that, that kind of uh, messes with your mind. It really does. If you ever have a chance, you're at I don't know, somebody's farm and you're like an old car or refrigerator sitting in a pond or something you know, a couple hundred yards out, just whatever it might be, and you're allowed to shoot at it, you'll see what I mean. Or just anywhere where you can shoot long range. Uh, now, if you're shooting at something this big, a target that big or this big at 200 yards or 300 yards, yeah, that's hard to hit. But if you got something with some size to it out there, You'd be surprised what you can hit, okay? You don't need to fake it, put it that way. Especially, you know, in that short that I'm uh, in question, at least by one individual on the planet. Uh, I'm shooting with a freaking rifle. It's the 80-yard gong, which is this big, and I got a, uh, a prism scope on it. 
is it's a that one's a two power scope <laughs> i mean i should if i miss that i you know i definitely can't hit it with a handgun all right so that's what's funny all right here we go 22 caliber let's try the gong Well, let's try something different. How about the uh, buffalo over there? Red on red, red side on red buffalo. Well, I couldn't tell. There, hit it that time. It's hard to tell sometimes with a 22. Here's that. Hear that? <laughs> yeah, I got to test it double action. I've been shooting it some in double action. Uh, yeah, I'll shoot it double action all the way through here and yeah, make sure that works. That's part of the test, right? For those who don't know, uh, when you fire double action, you do not get as long a hammer fall. Now, on any revolver I've ever fired, I, there might be an exception to that. But the hammer doesn't come back quite as far in double action. I'll assume it's the same with this one. While it's got the empties in it, I'll uh, let you, see when you cock it, you're back to there. So that's pretty far to fall. Let's see in double action. Let me see it. Okay, it's about to fall. Yeah. So it only goes back to about there, double action, whereas in single action, it's all the way back there. Yeah, that's even a better illustration than some of the other firearms I've uh, shown that with. So that's where people would get into trouble I know back in the 70s when it was a revolver world primarily you know people carrying a whatever a two inch model 66 or whatever and, and I, I knew a couple of guys they were always slicking up the actions and working on the triggers and loosening the screw to re release some of the tension on the mainspring and all that get the, get the, a really nice uh, a nice light uh, double action pull on that revolver uh, especially a carry revolver and uh, they'd loosen that screw a little tension screw a little too much or, or fine-tune the action to the point where oh yeah beautiful it felt better than a python but they'd get a light strike about one out of six yeah and uh, that's nothing I want because guess what that one out of six is probably gonna show up at the wrong time I've been around a while. I'm good friends with old Murphy. And old Murphy just has a way of showing up when you don't want him showing up, right? Now, if you're a youngster and you don't know who Murphy is, look it up. Uh, you will you will learn who Murphy is <laughs> at some point. You definitely will. I think I've got a mix of ammo this time. So if I have a misfire, I don't know who to blame. CCI or Winchester. Uh, so... Well, I could look at the head stamp, couldn't I? All right. Shoot this thing again. It's pretty cool. It'll be, it'll be nice once they start showing up in shops more uh, commonly, won't it? Let's shoot that bucket. Yeah. Ooh, and that two liter, wow, put on a show, dude. <laughs> I noticed something in the action. See if it's still. Oh, okay. There we go. You know how when you have a, oh, you're gonna let the action down. You got it cocked. You check and check out what are you doing, but you got it cocked and you wanna ease the hammer down. All right, well, put your finger, pull the trigger. Now this is not, advisable to do it when it's loaded or pointing in the wrong direction or anything like that but so 
somehow you got to get the, the hammer release, right? The sear, so you got to pull the trigger. Well, on this one, yeah, when you pull the trigger, you get that. Feel that? Now I'm taking all the tension off the hammer. I got the hammer pulled back. Well, maybe I didn't have it pulled back on. I, I don't know. But I know sometimes it, it snaps. Like, it's kind of weird. That's not now. I don't know. Maybe it's just where I had the hammer sometimes. No way. Oh, well. I'll break it in and shoot it some more. And then we'll do a video and uh, let you know what we think about it. So far, it seems okay. Oh, there's a random bullet. Oh, that's a CCI. I'll just put it right there. That'll identify it. Okay. It's not like my hand loads. I can tell what kind of ammo it is, right? A pretty gun. No doubt about it. Uh, it's it's cool they've come out with that. Yeah, I mean, say what you want about Colt. They have a uh, kind of a checkered past in, in some ways. But, uh, you know, in the last few years, they've been making some nice revolvers. The Python, the Anaconda, these, uh, the regular King Cobras and different different firearms. And as I've pointed out before, you know, somebody from the 1970s wouldn't necessarily uh, see that much difference or anything that would be particularly objectionable other than that QR code right there, <laughs> which is not too uh, noticeable. Uh, unlike the Smith & Wessons with the, the key lock and or sleeved barrels and things like that, you know. Uh, with Colt, and of course, I'm more of a Smith & Wesson person, I'll have to say, but, but yeah, I don't know. The new Colts, to me, uh, they've kind of kept the spirit of the old guns, even though the action's different on the inside of the Python, Anaconda, whatever. But uh, I don't know. You don't. There's no glaring uh, change. Uh, you know, one-piece barrels and no giant cost-cutting uh, things I'm aware of. Uh, you know, the, the key lock is the big thing. Yeah, you don't have that. So anyway. All right, can I shoot this one more time before I let you go? Anything else I need to holler at you about? Uh, yeah, somebody uh, at the comment I saw, I was talking about Bob Dylan last week, and uh, I was had some negative things to say about Bob Dylan, of course, and, and how he's not my friend or whatever. <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's definitely not my friend. And that's the thing I've talked about before, the, uh, you know, you, there are so many people in the public eye, and, and it's usually artists, right? Uh, your favorite uh, musicians, whoever they are, actors, actresses, sculptor, or painter, whoever it might be, uh, writers, authors, you know, uh, they just might not be somebody you would enjoy sitting down and having a, a beer or a cup of coffee with and discussing much. You wouldn't get very far before you realize how vastly different they think. You know, uh, it's just kind of the way it is. And I think I mentioned that last week, maybe. As they say, you don't want to, the old line, you don't want to meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed. That's happened to me a time or two. I don't know, a hero is kind of a, a loose term, but you know, people that you really, really like, really admire. Um, sometimes you meet them and, and they're not, you know, what you expected, you know, and uh, or whatever. And I wouldn't expect if I went back and made a list of all my favorite uh, singers, musicians, artists, country, rock, round down the line, and my favorite writers, uh, favorite anybody in the entertainment world. Uh, and and then could have a chat with them. <laughs> it could be that like 80% of them you know, get away, you know. And and I, that's just life. That's just the way it is. Uh, uh, so, but anyway, um, kind of my point on all that is, you know, you, well, you you can just like eliminate all those people and all their work from your life. But I don't know. You're you're eliminating a lot of the the artistic aspects maybe of the world if you do that uh, so I guess I'm just selfish enough 
I take, I like to take the best from people. Now it depends. I mean, someone could be as so uh, obnoxiously opposed to to me or my life that I don't want any part of them. That 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 is entirely possible. But by and large, you know, finding out that I don't know, one of my favorite singers uh, is is just exactly the opposite of me politically or maybe even as anti-gun or whatever, you know, it, it's a blemish, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna not, not ever listen to a song that I like that they sing, just kind of the way it is. I'm not gonna, I'm, a, I'm pretty good, I think, at pulling the, the best from people, you know, and just whatever they have to offer, everybody has a lot to offer, one way or the other, right? Uh, I, I like to take the best from people, the things I like the most, however you wanna phrase that, the, the the creative side of them or whatever it might be and uh, I can I can you know forget the rest maybe okay it's the art I, I guess I can separate the art from the artist is what I'm saying and that's kind of what I do you know uh, for example an actor like like I don't name anybody you know Matt Damon George Clooney or John Wayne or whoever you want uh, John Wick I don't is that his real name? I guess. Uh, uh, the only way we know these people is through their art. It's really their art is what we're referring to. When I say John Wayne, of course, it's even a pseudonym, right? But if I say, yeah, I like John Wayne, I like John. well, that doesn't necessarily mean I, I love all of his political views or, or John Wick or Matt Damon or whoever it might be. It means I like the Matt Damon characters that I see on the big screen or on my little screen or whatever it is that that's the Matt Damon or the John Wayne that I know you know that's only the only way I really know him you know of course through through technology and the, the way the world is you know these days and for a long time we end up knowing more about them you know and, and like I said it might be so much that we it does turn us off totally from that person but uh but by and large, you know, you're going to lead a pretty meager life if uh, anybody who disagrees with you, like almost in any area, you just uh, write them off. You know, I mean, you know, be my guest, do it, but you're going to, you're going to, uh, you're going to eliminate a lot of, a uh, lot of art from your life, put it that way. You know, a lot of art of all kinds, you know, whether it's paintings or sculpture or music or acting, or ballet, I, I don't know, whatever you, you, you want to call it. But because uh, most people that are true artists, they're they're not, you know, your, your corner auto repairmen. Yeah, you know, they're involved in that kind of art and they're they're sensitive people, generally speaking. They're more emotion based. Here I go with a lot of generalizations, but one reason they are so artistic and they're so good at acting or painting or whatever it is or singing is they are uh, they are um, they're more sensitive creatures to some extent like me they're more emotional creatures like me <laughs> uh, and they're in tune with all of that and they're able to create they're very creative and here we go with more generalizations people who are generally more sensitive and creative and emotional uh, tend not to be as logical and can be sometimes more irrational when it comes to logical arguments you know about you name it politics gun control whatever it might be you know I, I just I know that that's just I mean, you can disagree with that, but that's my experience on the planet. That's true, okay? There's always exceptions. Uh, so anyway, uh, you can eliminate a lot of uh, quality from your life if uh, you just write everybody off that you disagree with. Everybody, you know, now there's some you might need to write off. There's, there's a few I write off, but by and large, it's, uh, it's, just, a, it's just a sad truth sometimes. <laughs> Matt Damon's a good example. Gosh, there's so many movies. I, I just love him, man. Good Will Hunting is one of my probably top ten movies of all time. I, I just love that movie. And, uh, you know, him and Robin Williams, they're just genius together in that movie, you know. And, uh, you know, but I would disagree with, with him politically. I don't know, maybe Robin Williams. I didn't know. I don't know 
as much about him, but uh, didn't know as much about him. Uh, but you know, that's the way it is. I take the best part of people and enjoy it. And then I can just sort of put the other part of them you know, on the shelf. Uh, good. I am not gonna be having breakfast with them, you know. So, and fortunately they don't vote in my district. So <laughs> anyway, too much yakking. I'll tell you what, I'll shoot one more time and I'm gonna let you go. So that's the one that I, I just got it loaded with an empty under the hammer and I was ready to shoot it, wasn't I? So let's do it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go out here and get this cowboy. I've not been drinking anything except uh, sparkling water, put it that way. Oh yeah, I should have been a cowboy. Should have been a cowboy. Yeah man. Packing a 45. So, so I'm going to let you go and uh, hope to see some of you in Greenville, uh, t Kentucky, uh, this Saturday, the 23rd, 11 o'clock. And uh, hope to see all of you next Sunday morning, and uh, as well as in every video we post. I'm, I'm keeping a record of all of you who uh, miss a video. And I've got, see, especially Ralph, you've missed a lot of, I don't know what you're doing, but you're not watching enough videos. So I keep a tally on the ones you see and the ones you don't, and uh, I'm gonna start mailing that to you maybe emailing to you at the end of the year, okay? Let you know in those little box you can check once you've made up the homework assignment, okay? And you caught that movie or that video. So I'm gonna let you go. I say that all the time, don't I? I got a mess to clean up. I got guns to ballast all and clean. Wow, that's all right, that's part of it. I've done a lot of cleaning this week. We had the AKs out, and the M16, well, last week, I guess, but AKs are a job to clean. Well, <laughs> uh, that didn't sound right, did it? Most people never clean them. Uh, but the way I clean them, and we have a video, I think, on that, I I just cannot let, and I'll let you go, but I, I cannot, uh, just because it's an AK, I just can't let it stay dirty. I don't care if, if it would function with very little care. I mean, it's my gun. You know, I've got several AKs. I've paid a lot of money for all those AKs. And, you know, an AK, an AR, any these guns, any firearm, if you take care of it, wow, it could last a thousand years, two, three, five thousand years, right? Well, what's gonna happen to it? What's gonna happen to it? If I keep this, of course, this is stainless. If I keep this gun clean and oiled, uh, and, and this firearm is not stainless, but if I clean it when I shoot it and oil it, you know, it's, it'll still be working a thousand years, two thousand years from now. I mean, why not? What's going to happen to it? You know, I've got one like this, made in 1883, and it's it's fine. It's got some ding dings and things in it. Uh, finishes off. You've seen it, right? The 18, uh, 1883, you know, cavalry Colt, U.S. cavalry Colt. What's going to happen to that one in another hundred years? Well especially because it's an antique and you know anybody that owns it will take good care of it keep it oiled and clean everything so i would expect that gun to look exactly like it does right now a hundred years from now because most of that wear and those bangs and dents and different things on it probably occurred in the 1800s early 1900s before it was considered collectible or valuable at all you know you ever think about that uh whereas uh, I'm sorry to say like an old 55 Chevy or something, you know, you get banged up maybe or rusty fenders and all that back in the uh, 1950s or 60s or 70s. But then once they start becoming collectible, eh, I'll fix that thing up and keep that little cream puff, you know, in good shape. And so, you know, it's, it's just metal. If it's oiled, you know, it's not going to deteriorate, is it? Maybe in 40,000 years, you know. So anyway, the AK, back to that. Uh, that gas tube, oh my gosh. 
I mean, it's it's just uh, to get them clean just takes some some. Now I, know I don't use soapy water as, as often. That's probably what I should use. But uh, and then just oil it back up. But uh, I, I just with any firearm, I want to clean it as if not make it exactly new like it came off the line but but pretty close just get all the crud out of it totally all the crud and i mean if there's a little smudge but it, yeah, it's oil it's, it's that's fine but you know they just like to get all that out and of course that ammo is always dirty dirty stuff you know the 762 by 39 uh steel case ammo even if it's supposedly non-corrosive it's still dirty dirty stuff you know and uh, so when I cleaned one of those things, I think I posted a picture of that, yeah, after I finished on, uh, I was about ready to put it back together on Instagram. It was on the shooting table in parts last week. Uh, uh, I mean, it just takes me some time. I take it out, I'll always take that gun out on the shooting table, plenty of room. I get my ramrods, that's those little cotton swab things. And I get you know my snake and brush and plenty of, Battle stall and uh, my, well, you name it, pipe cleaners, whatever, and uh, paper towels, and I just go at it. And you know, it looks like I've been shooting black powder. You know, time I get finished cleaning, cleaning one of those things. That's another firearm. If you ever get into AKs and you're shooting a lot of steel cased ammo, I, I do tend to treat the, my AKs uh, a lot like my muzzle loaders, black powder. You know, where you just don't shoot it unless you're going to shoot several rounds, you know, because it's just as big a mess to clean. Uh, if you've shot it 10 times or 300 times, it's it's uh, it's messy. Uh, again, it's the powder and, you know, the steel cased ammo, the powder or whatever and all that. It's just dirtier, I think. And so I, I don't get an AK out just to take a couple of shots. Whereas I might do that with a bolt gun or a lever gun, you know, get it out on Sunday. I mood to shoot the 1886 or something and take a few shots and I run a patch down the barrel or a snake and a shotgun, same thing. It's just not a big deal. But an AK, you know, the gas tubes and it's just, it's just if you fired five times, it's just going to be kind of messy, you know. And, uh, and, and then also part of it is I don't fully trust the steel cased ammo that comes from whatever country far away that says it's non-corrosive i don't totally trust that you know i kind of treat it all as corrosive you know so uh, so you know i i shoot them when i'm going to shoot maybe i'm going to shoot it today and then maybe we're going to do a video with it i know in a day or two maybe i'll get it out sunday and shoot since it's already dirty or whatever so i try to group my ak shooting a little bit and in my uh, muzzle loading not always but I try to do that so that's the information you were dying to hear I know that's why I kept you a little bit longer so appreciate you coming out I appreciate your support to the channel uh, I, I never say it but I hope you're uh, liking and uh, commenting a lot of you are of course and what else uh, subscribing if you're not <laughs> but uh, uh, we, we uh, appreciate you your support and uh, people that support us and uh, appreciate you keep the way you keep coming back for more abuse right so uh, this is a 45 you have witnessed a 45 Colt being shot this morning and I hope it makes your coffee taste better life is good